I'll be reading the full Georgia indictment filed by Fannie Willis with the Fulton Superior Court. There are 19 defendants, so it's the state of Georgia v. Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, Kenneth John Cheesebro, Jeffrey Bossert Clark, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Ray Stalin Smith III, Robert David Cheely, Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Mika Trusher Still, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Trevian C. Cuddy, Sydney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham Hall, Misty Hampton, a.k.a. Emily Misty Hayes. Okay, and then there's 41 counts. They are violations of the Georgia RICO uh, Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, solicitation of violation of oath by public officer, false statements and writings, false statements and writings again, Solicitation of violation of oath by public officer. Solicitation of violation of oath by public officer again. False statements and writings. Impersonating a public officer. Conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer. Forgery in the first degree. Conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree. False statements and writings. Conspiracy to commit false statements and writings. Criminal attempt to commit false filing false documents. Conspiracy to commit filing false documents. Forgery in the first degree. Conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree. False statements and writings. Conspiracy to commit false statements and writings. Criminal attempt to commit influencing witnesses. Criminal attempt to commit influencing witnesses again. Criminal attempt to commit false statements and writings. Solicitation of violation of oath by public officer. False statements and writings. False statements and writings again. False statements and writings a third time. Filing false documents. Solicitation of violation of oath by public officer. False statements and writings. Conspiracy to commit solicitation of false statements and writings. Influencing witnesses. Conspiracy to commit election fraud. Conspiracy to commit election fraud again. Conspiracy to commit computer theft. Conspiracy to commit computer trespass. Conspiracy to commit computer invasion of privacy. Conspiracy to defraud the state. Solicitation of violation of oath by public officer, false statements and writings, false statements and writings again, and perjury. And those are the 41 counts. And then they've got a lot of blank space underneath that for the uh, 19 defendants to sign that they've received the document and uh, plead either guilty or not guilty. So lots of uh, little blank uh, fill in the blank with your name, with your attorney, with the date that you're pleading guilty or not guilty, spaced on the indictment. All right, moving on, we see the state of Georgia, County of Fulton, in the Superior Court of said county, the grand jurors selected, chosen, and sworn for the County of Fulton to wit. And then it gives the names of all the jurors. Uh, I guess we don't need to dox them, so we can skip over that. But it appears there were around 23 uh, jurors in total. Some of them have lines crossed out. I'm assuming they were eliminated for some reason. All right, on to the table of contents, which we'll skip because it simply says uh, which page each of the um, counts is on. And remember, that's 41 counts. And in total, according to the table of contents, there's 100 pages with perjury starting on page 97. All right, so we move on to count one of 41. The grand jurors aforesaid in the name and behalf of the citizens of Georgia do hereby charge and accuse Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, Kenneth John Cheesebro, Jeffrey Buzzer Clark, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Ray Stanley Smith, Robert David Cheely, Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Mika Treasure Still, Stephen Cliff Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Charvian C. Cooty, Sidney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Elson Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton, with the offense of 
violation of the Georgia RICO Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act for the said accused individually and as persons concerned in the commission of a crime and together with unindicted co-conspirators. In the state of Georgia, the county and the county of Fulton on and between the 4th day of November 2020 and the 15th day of September 2022. While associated with an enterprise unlawfully uh, conspired and endeavored to conduct and participate in directly and indirectly such enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity in violation of OCGA 1614-4B, as described below and incorporated by reference as if fully set forth herein, contrary to the laws of the state, the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Introduction Defendant Donald John Trump lost the United States presidential election held on November 3, 2020. One of the states who lost was Georgia. Trump and other defendants charged in the indictment refused to accept that Trump lost, and they knowingly and willfully joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome of the election in favor of Trump. That conspiracy contained a common plan and purpose to commit two or more acts of racketeering activity in the Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia, and in other states. The Enterprise at all times relevant to this count of the indictment, the defendants, as well as others not named as defendants, unlawfully conspired and endeavored to conduct and participate in any criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere. Defendants Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Giuliani, and at least the rest of the defendants, unindicted co-conspirators, individual 1 through individual 30, and others known and unknown to the grand jury, constituted a criminal organization whose members and associates engaged in various related criminal activities, including, but not limited to, false statements and writings, impersonating a public officer, forgery, filing false documents, influencing witnesses, computer theft, computer trespass, computer invasion of privacy, conspiracy to defraud the state, acts involving theft and perjury. The criminal organization constituted an enterprise that, as that term is defined in the OCGA uh, 1614.33. That is, a group of individuals associated in fact. All right. The defendants and the other members of the associates of the enterprise had connections and relationships with one another and with the enterprise. The enterprise constituted an ongoing organization whose members and associates functioned as a continuing unit for a common purpose of achieving the objectives of the enterprise. The enterprise operated in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia, in other states, including but not limited to Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, and in the District of Columbia. The enterprise opened for a period of time sufficient to permit its members and associates to pursue its objectives. Section Manner and Methods of the Enterprise The manner and methods used by the defendants and other members and associates of the enterprise to further the goals of the enterprise and to achieve its purpose included, but were not limited to, the following. False statements and solicitation of state legislatures. Members of the enterprise, including several defendants, appearing at hearings in Fulton County, Georgia, before members of the Georgia General Assembly on December 3rd, 2020, December 10th, 2020, December 3rd, 2020. At these hearings, members of the enterprise made false statements concerning fraud in November 3rd, 2020 presidential election. The purpose of these false statements was to persuade Georgia legislatures to reject lawful electoral votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia. Excuse me. Members of the enterprise corruptly solicited Georgia legislatures instead of unlawful to unlawfully appoint their own presidential electors for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald Trump. Members of the enterprise also made false statements to state legislatures during hearings and in meetings of Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania in November and December 2020 to pursue legislatures in those states to unlawfully appoint their own presidential electors. Section. Paragraph 2, false statements, or section 2, uh, false statements to and solicitation of high-ranking state officials. Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, made false statements in Fulton County and elsewhere in the state of Georgia to Georgia officials, including the governor, the secretary of state, the speaker of the House of Representatives. Members of the enterprise also corruptly solicited Georgia officials, including the secretary of state and the speaker of the House of Representatives, to violate their oath to the Georgia Constitution and to the United States Constitution by unlawfully changing the outcome of the November 3rd, 2020 election uh, in Georgia in favor of Donald Trump. Members of the enterprise also made false statements to and solicited state officials in Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. 
Section 3. Creation and Distribution of False Electoral College Documents Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, created false electoral college documents and recruited individuals to convene and cast false electoral votes at the Georgia State Capitol in Fulton County on December 14, 2020. After the false electoral college votes were cast, members of the enterprise transmitted the votes to the President of the United States, the Archivist of the United States, the Georgia Secretary of State, and the Chief Judge of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia. The false documents were intended to disrupt and delay the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021, in order to unlawfully change the outcome of the November 3rd 2020 presidential election in favor of Donald Trump. Similar schemes were executed by members of the enterprise in Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Section 4. Harassment and Intimidation of Fulton County Election Worker Ruby Freeman Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, falsely accused Fulton County election worker Ruby Freeman of committing election crimes in Fulton County, Georgia. These false accusations were repeated by Georgia legislatures and other Georgia officials in an effort to persuade them to unlawfully change the outcome of the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in favor of Donald Trump. In furtherance of this scheme, members of the enterprise traveled from out of state to harass Freeman, intimidate her, and solicit her to falsely confess to election crimes that she did not commit. Section 5. Solicitation of High-Ranking United States Department of Justice Officials Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, corruptly solicited high-ranking United States Department of Justice officials to make false statements to government officials in Fulton County, Georgia, including the Governor, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the President pro tempore of the Senate. In one instance, Donald Trump stated to the acting United States Attorney General, just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Section 6. Solicitation of the Vice President of the United States Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, corruptly solicited the Vice President of the United States to violate the United States Constitution and federal law by unlawfully rejecting electoral college votes cast in Fulton County, Georgia, by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from Georgia. Members of the enterprise also corruptly solicited the Vice President to reject votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors from several other states. Section 7. Unlawful Breach of Election Equipment in Georgia and Elsewhere Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, corruptly conspired in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to unlawfully access secure voting equipment and voter data. In Georgia, members of the enterprise stole data, including ballot images, voting equipment, software, and personal voter information. The stolen data was then distributed to other members of the enterprise, including members in other states. Section 8. Obstructive Acts in Furtherance of the Conspiracy and the Cover-Up Members of the enterprise, including several of the defendants, filed false documents, made false statements to government investigators, and committed perjury in judicial proceedings in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere in furtherance of and to cover up the conspiracy. All right. Acts of racketeering and activity that overt acts and overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. As part of and on behalf of the criminal enterprise detailed above, the defendants and other members and associates of the enterprise committed overt acts to affect the objectives of the enterprise, including but not limited to Act 1. On or about the fourth day of November 2020, Donald John Trump made a nationally televised speech falsely declaring victory in the 2020 presidential election. Approximately four days earlier, on or about October 31st, 2020, Donald John Trump discussed a draft speech with unindicted co-conspirator Individual One, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that falsely declared victory and falsely claimed voter fraud. The speech was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. A uh, key point, the speech was written October 31st, which is actually before the election happened. Okay, Act 2. On or about the 15th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani placed a telephone call to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and left an approximately 83-second long voicemail message for unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, making statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 election in Fulton County, Georgia. This telephone call was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 2 continued. On or about 19th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Juliana 
Jenna Lynn Ellis, Sydney Catherine Powell, and unindicted co-conspirator Individual 3, whose identity is known to the grand jury, appeared at a press conference at the Republican National Committee headquarters on behalf of Donald John Trump and Donald J. Trump for President Incorporated, the Trump campaign, and made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 4. Act 3 is skipped because they had Act 2 twice. I'm starting to think that's a typo, actually. Okay. On or about the 20th day of November 2020, David James Schaefer sent an email to unindicted co-conspirator Individual 4, whose identity is known to the grand jury and other individuals. In the email, David James Schaefer stated that Scott Graham Hall, a Georgia Bales bondsman, has been looking to the ele- has been ha- Georgia J- Bail Bondsman, quote, has been looking into the election on behalf of the president at the request of David Bossy, end quote, and asked the unindicted co-conspirator individual four to exchange contact information with Scott Graham Hall and to, quote, help him as needed, end quote. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 5. On or about the 20th day of November 2020, Donald John Trump and Mark Randall Meadows met with Majority Leader of the Michigan Senate Michael Shirkley, Speaker of the Michigan House of Representatives Lee Chatfield, and other Michigan legislators in the Oval Office at the White House and Donald John Trump uh, made false statements concerning fraud in November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Michigan. Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani joined the meeting by telephone. This meeting was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 6. On or about the 21st day of November 2020, Mark Randall Meadows sent a text message to United States Representative Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and stated, quote, Can you send me the number for the speaker and the leader of the PA legislature? POTUS wants to chat with them, end quote. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 7. On or about the 22nd day of November 2020, Donald John Trump and the Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani placed a telephone call uh, to Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives, Russell Rusty Bowers. During the telephone call, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in November 3rd, 2020 uh, presidential election in Arizona and solicited, requested, and importuned Bowers to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. Bowers declined and later testified to the United States House of Representatives Select Committee to investigate the January 6th uh, attack on the United States Capitol that he told Donald John Trump, quote, I would not break my oath, end quote. The false statements and solicitations were an overt acts in furtherance of conspiracy. Act 8. On or about the 25th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of Pennsylvania legislators in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. During the meeting, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Pennsylvania and solicited, requested, and importuned the Pennsylvania legislators present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. During the meeting, Jenna Lynn Ellis solicited, requested, and importuned the, president, the Pennsylvania legislature's president the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. Donald John Trump joined the meeting by telephone, made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Pennsylvania, and solicited, requested, and importuned the Pennsylvania legislature's president the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. These were overt acts and furtherance the conspiracy. Act 9. On or about the 25th day of November 2020, immediately after the meeting of Pennsylvania legislatures in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani and Janet Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses, Donald John Trump invited a group of Pennsylvania legislatures and others to meet with him at the White House. Later that day, Donald John Trump, Mark Randall Meadows, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, Jenna Lynn Ellis, and unindicted co-conspirators Individual 5 and Individual 6, whose identities are known to the grand jury, met with the group of Pennsylvania legislatures at the White House and discussed holding a special session of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. <laughs> Act 10. On or about the 26th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis placed a telephone call to the Speaker of the House of the Pennsylvania Representatives, Brian Cutler, and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. 
This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 11. On or about the 26th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Pennsylvania Senate Jacob, quote, Jake Corman for the purposes of soliciting, requesting, and importuning Corman to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 12. On or about the 27th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, Brian Cutler, and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 12. On or about the 27th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Pennsylvania Senate, Jay Corman, for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning Corman to unlawfully appoint presidential electors for Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in front of the conspiracy. Act 14. On or about the 27th day of November 2020, Donald Trump, Trump placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Pennsylvania Senate, Jake Corman, for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning Corman to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was a overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 15. On or about the 28th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives Brian Cutler and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 16. On or about the 29th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives Brian Cutler and left Cutler a voicemail message for the purpose of soliciting, requesting, and importuning him to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Pennsylvania. This was an act in furtherance of conspiracy. Okay, Act 17. On or about the 30th day of November 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliana and uh, Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared, spoke, and presented witnesses at a meeting of Arizona legislatures in Phoenix, Arizona, unindicted co-conspirators, individual five and individual six, whose identities are known to the grand jury, were also present. During the meeting, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Arizona and solicited, requested, and importuned the Arizona legislatures present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. During the meeting, General Lynn Ellis solicited, requested, and importuned the Arizona legislatures present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Arizona. Donald John Trump joined the meeting by telephone and made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Arizona. These were vote acts and for the conspiracy. Act 18. On or about the 30th day of November 2020, Michael A. Roman instructed unindicted co-conspirator 7, whose identity is known to the grand jury, to coordinate with individuals associated with the Trump campaign to contact state legislatures in Georgia and elsewhere on behalf of Donald John Trump, and to encourage them to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from their respective states. This one is a verked act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 19. On or between the first day of December 2020 and the 31st day of December 2020, Donald John Trump and Mark Randall Meadows met with John McKenty and requested that McKenty prepare a memorandum outlining the strategy for disrupting and delaying the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2021. The day prescribed in law for county votes cast by the duly elected and qualified presidential electors of Georgia and other states. The strategy included having Vice President Michael R. Quote, Mike Pence count only half of the electoral votes from certain states and then return the remaining electoral votes to state legislatures. The request was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 20. On or about the first day of December 2020, Rudolph William Willis Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis met with Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives Rusty Bowers, President of the Arizona Senate Karen Fan, and other Arizona legislatures in Phoenix, Arizona. Unindicted co-conspirator Individual 5, whose identity is known to the grand jury, was also present. During the meeting, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani made false statements concerning the fraud in November 3, 2020 presidential election in Arizona and solicited, requested, and importuned the legislatures present to call a special session of Arizona State Legislature. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 21. 
On or about the second day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis um, Giuliani and Jenna Lynn Ellis appeared spoke presented witnesses at a meeting of the Michigan House of Representatives Oversight Committee. During the meeting, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani made false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Michigan and solicited requested an importune the Michigan legislature's president of the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Michigan. During the meeting, Jenna Lynn Ellis solicited requested an importune to the Michigan legislature is present at the meeting to unlawfully appoint presidential electors from Michigan. These were overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 22. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at real Donald Trump, quote, Georgia hearings now on at a o at o a n n. Amazing. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 23. On or about the third day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Jenna Lynn Ellis, and Ray Stanley Smith III committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by a public officer in violation of OCGA 1647 and 1610-1 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting, requesting, and importuning certain public officers then serving as elected members of the Georgia Senate and present at a state as a, at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting, including the unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, Senators Lee Anderson, Brandon Beach, Matt Brass, Greg Dalazal, Steve Gooch, Tyler Harper, Bill Heath, Jen Jordan, John F. Kennedy, William Lidgen, Elena Parent, Michael Rett, Carter and Summers, and Blake Tillery, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation the, the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer, OCGA 1610-1, by unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia in willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said persons as prescribed by law, with intent that said persons engage in said conduct. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 24. On or about the third day of December 2020, Rudolph Lew William Lewis Giuliani committed a felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA 1610-20 in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate present at the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee uh, meeting. That at least 96,600 mail-in ballots were counted on the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to the county elections office. Two, that Dominion Voting Systems equipment used in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Antrim County, Michigan, mistakenly recorded 6,000 votes for Joseph R. Biden when the votes were actually cast for Donald John Trump. Said statements being within the jurisdiction of the oath Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and Georgia Bureau of Investigation, departments and agencies of the state government and county city law enforcement agencies, this was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA 161435AXXII and an overt act of in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 25. On or about the 3rd day of December 2020, Ray Stanley Smith III committed the felony offense of false statements and writings in violation of OCGA 161020 in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly, willfully, and unlawfully making at least one of the following false statements and representations to members of the Georgia Senate President at a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee meeting. 1. That 2,506 felons voted illegally in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 2. The 66,248 underage people illegally registered to vote before their 17th birthday prior to the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 3. That at least 2,423 people voted in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia who were not le listed as registered to vote. 4. That 1,043 people voted in November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia who had illegally registered to vote using a post office box. 5. That 10,315 or more dead people voted in November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. 6. That Fulham County election workers at State Farm Arena ordered poll watchers and members of the media to leave the tabulation area on the night of November 3rd, 2020 and continue to operate after ordering everyone to leave. 
Such statements being within the jurisdiction of the Office of the Georgia Secretary of State and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Departments and Agencies of State Government, and County and City Law Enforcement Agencies. This was an act of racketeering activity under OCGA 1614.35a XXI and an overt act of furtherance of conspiracy. Act 26. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump calls to be tweeted from Twitter, um, quote, wow, blockbuster testimony taking place right now in Georgia. Ballot stuffing by Dems when Republicans were forced to leave the large counting room. Plenty more coming, but this alone leads to an easy win of the state, end quote. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 27. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump, quote, people in Georgia got caught cold bringing in massive numbers of ballots and putting them in, quote, voting machines. Great job, at Brian Kemp, GA, exclamation point, uh, end quote. All right. This was an overt act in front of the conspiracy. Act 28. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump met with Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, Brian Cutler, in the Oval Office at the White House and discussed holding a special session of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. This was an overt act in front of the conspiracy. Act 29. On or between the third day of December 2020 and the 26th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Luz Giuliani placed a telephone call to the President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate. Cecil Terrell Butch Miller for the purpose of making false statements concerning fraud in November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 30. On or between the third day of December 2020 and the 26th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate Butch Miller. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 31. On or about the 5th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Georgia Governor Brian Kemp and solicited and requested an importuned Kemp to call a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 32. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump calls to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. Gee, what a surprise. Has anyone informed the so called uh, says he has no power to do anything, Governor at Brian Kemp, Georgia, and his puppet Lieutenant Governor at uh, Giaf Duncan, GA, that they could easily solve this mess and win. Signature verification and call a special session. So easy. Um, and then a URL link to what I'm assuming Donald Trump was citing as evidence. And that's the end of the tweet. And then the uh, indictment continues. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 33. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Sydney Catherine Powell entered into a written engagement agreement with Sullivan Stricker LLC, a forensic data firm located in Fulham County, Georgia, for the performance of computer forensic collections and analytics on Dominion voting systems equipment in Michigan and elsewhere. The unlawful breach of election equipment in Coffee County, Georgia, was subsequently performed under this agreement. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 34. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Robert David Cheely sent an email to John Charles Eastman, unindicted co-conspirator individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and Georgia Senator Brandon Beach that stated, quote, I am working on setting up a call for you with the Speaker and the President pro tem for tomorrow. I am also making the leadership aware of the importance for Trump electors to meet on December 14th. Please provide the citation to the requirements of the duties which they must comply with, end quote. This was overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 35. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, John Charles Eastman sent an email to Robert David Cheely, unindicted co-conspirator individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, and Georgia Senator Brandon Beach that stated that the Trump presidential electorate nominees in Georgia needed to meet on December 14th, 2020, sign six sets of certificates of vote, and mail them, quote, to the president of the Senate and to other officials, end quote. This was an overt act in front of conspiracy. Act 36. On or about the 6th day of December 2020, Robert David Cheely sent an email to unindicted co-conspirator individual two, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that stated he had been speaking with John Charles Eastman and was attempting to set up a call with Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives, 
David Ralston and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate, Butch Miller, to encourage them to call a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. In the email, Robert David Cheely stated, quote, Professor Eastman told me tonight that it is critical that the 16 electors for President Trump meet next Monday and vote in accordance with 3 U.S.C. 7, end quote. In the email, Robert David Cheely further stated, quote, I assume you can make sure this happens, end quote. This was over and acted for those of the conspiracy. Act 37. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, unindicted co-conspirator Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, sent an email to Robert David Cheely and David James Schaefer that stated, quote, Bob, can you get on a call with David Schaefer, state GOP chair, and I later this morning to discuss? David has been on top of a lot of efforts in the state. I get off a board call around 1030, end quote. This was an overt act in front of the conspiracy. Act 38. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Blues Giuliani caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Rudy Giuliani a retweet of unindicted co-conspirator Individual 8, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that stated, quote, Georgia Patriot call to action. Today is the day we need you to call your state Senate and House reps and ask them to sign a petition for a special session. We must have a free and fair elections in Georgia, and this is our only path to ensuring every legal vote is counted at real Donald Trump. End quote. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 39. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, John Charles Eastman sent an email to Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani with an attached memorandum titled, quote, The Real Deadline for Settling the State's Electoral Votes, end quote. The body of the email stated, quote, Here's the memo we discussed, end quote. The memorandum was written by Kenneth John Cheesebro to James R. Troopis, an attorney associated with the Trump campaign, and advocates for the position that Trump presidential elector nominees in Wisconsin should meet and cast electoral votes for Donald John Trump on December 14, 2020, despite the fact that Donald John Trump lost the November 3, 2020 presidential election in Wisconsin. This email was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 40. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump requested that Bill White, an individual associated with the Trump campaign, then residing in Fulton County, Georgia, provide him with certain information that, including uh, including contact information for Majority Leader of the Georgia Senate, Mike Doug- Duggan, and President Pro Tempore of the Georgia Senate, Butch Miller. The following day, White sent an email containing the requested information to Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani, unidentified co-conspirator individual 5, whose identity is known to the grand jury and others. This request was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 41. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, Rudolph William Lewis Giuliani placed a telephone call to Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives, David Ralston, and discussed holding a special session of the Georgia General Assembly. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 42. On or about the 7th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump committed the felony offense of solicitation of violation of oath by public officer in violation of OCGA 1647 and 1610 in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully soliciting requesting an importunity speaker of the House of Representatives David Ralston, a public officer, to engage in conduct constituting the felony offense of violation of oath by public officer uh, by calling special session of the Georgia uh, General Assembly for the purpose of unlawfully appointing presidential electors from Georgia and willful and intentional violation of the terms of the oath of said person as prescribed by law with intent that said person engage in said conduct. This was an overt act of further conspiracy. Act 43. On or about the 8th day of December 2020, Donald John Trump placed a telephone call to Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr for the purpose of making false statements concerning fraud in the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia and elsewhere. During a telephone call, Donald John Trump asked Carr not to discourage other state attorneys general from joining the federal lawsuit filed by the state of Texas contesting the administration of the November 3rd, 2020 presidential election in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. This was an overt act in front of the conspiracy. All right, and as we approach minute 40, and we're only on Act 44, uh, we'll leave it here in this video. Uh, I hope you found it informative, uh, despite all the legalese making it take extra long to read everything. Um, Yeah, so part two should be uploaded soon. Uh, I hope you'll click over to that one. Thank you. Bye.
Oh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and all of that stuff. I'd greatly appreciate it, of course. All right, thank you. Bye.